Uh, calling to order the regular meeting of the Common Council of the City of Platteville on Tuesday, November 25th, 2014, and we will start with roll call. Barbara Stackhausen? Yes. Dick Bonin? Here. Ken Killian? Here. Eileen Nichols? Here. Amy C. Both Wilson? Here. Mike Den? Here. And Barbara Doss? Here. First item this evening is one of two public hearings. The first public hearing is regarding Resolution 1430, appropriating the necessary funds for the operation and administration of the City of Platteville for the year 2015. Staff presentation. Would you introduce yourself? I am Valerie Martin. I'm the finance director for the City of Platteville. Uh, we will just be giving a short presentation about uh, history of budget process as well as the 2015 budget. Stand back. <laughs> Is that better? I don't know. The public will have to tell us. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Okay, good. Um, there is a handout by on the table by the door if anyone does want one of the presentation. And it's also on the back screen, right? It they is, You could actually yeah. turn around and see it, just like we do. Okay, we will go ahead and get started. So what is a levy? A levy is the amount of tax requested by a taxing jurisdiction. The city of Platteville is one of five taxing jurisdictions for a uh, city of Platteville residents tax bill. 100% of the city levy is included in the tax bill. However, only a portion of the other taxing jurisdictions levies, which are the Platteville schools, Southwest Technical College, the state of Wisconsin and Grant County are included. For an example, Platteville schools only have part of their levy in the city of Platteville's tax bill and the other in the surrounding townships. So history of levy limits. Levy limits were first implemented in 2005. They apply to the total operational levy, not the tax rate. And before 2011, they allowed for annual increase, which was the greater of the net new construction or 3%. Uh, municipalities were allowed to increase operational levy by the amount of the net new construction only. So what is net new construction? It is the growth in the tax base due to new construction minus demolitions. So if it is negative, a 0% increase is allowed. You don't have to take a negative adjustment. So in simple terms, if there's no new construction, no levy increase. So another thing that comes into play is called expenditure restraint. Uh, this provides unrestricted, unrestricted aid to qualifying municipalities that limit growth in spending in the general fund. This payment is in addition to the aid that we receive from the county municipal aid program. And then I just included the formula if anyone wanted to know that. So here you can see the allowable increase. We, there's a difference, uh, as I just mentioned, the allowable increase that we could increase based on levy limit rules and the allowable increase um, on the expenditure restraint. So as you can see in 2015, if we wouldn't have had to follow the expenditure restraint uh, regulations, we could have increased our levy by quite a bit more. Um, but because we wanted to get that additional revenue and, and we had to stay in regulation with the expenditure restraints, we could only increase our levy by 3.6%. In 2013, closing loopholes. Negative adjustments to our tax levy now applies for new fees added to the tax roll if they were previously funded by the tax levy. Some examples of this include garbage collection, snow plowing, stormwater management, fire protection, and street sweeping. We do already have garbage as a special charge on our tax bill, so um, we were able to get that in before this regulation. Additional challenge is the future of state aid. Um, some examples of state aid are shared revenue, the expenditure restraint, computer aid, general transportation aid, connecting highway aids, recycling grants, and municipal service payments. So in 2014, the city of Platteville received $3,689,622 in shared revenue. And we're, for 2015, we're expecting to receive $37,129 less, which totals uh, a, a roughly about $3.6 million. And uh, we just received a, um, 
excerpt in the email the other day from the League of Municipalities that said the state is projected to have a negative fund balance of 132.1 million at the end of the 2013 to 15 biennium. And also the, rec the budget request submitted to the governor in preparation for the 2015 to 2017 budget exceeded the revenues by 2.2 billion. So we can't rely on the future of state aid as much. We'll have to come up with additional revenue sources. So now we're gonna get into the 2015 City of Platteville budget specifics. So major changes to this year's budget is we have a new part-time staff at the Senior Center. The museum director is retiring in 2015, however, the position is planned to be filled. Hourly employees return to 40 hours. They were at 37 hours. Health insurance costs go up, which I will talk a little bit more about later. And a 1.5% wage increase for EMT employees, permanent part-time staff, 20 hours and above, and salaried employees. Also, we did create a new taxi bus special revenue fund. So health insurance, we have two carriers, Dean and Medical Associates. Dean rates went up 19.9% and Medical Associates went up 4.2%. So this was quite an increase for the city. Um, therefore, um, employee premium share was increased from 10% to 12%, excluding the uh, police union. Um, you'll just see a graph now of the general fund revenues. Um, so property taxes um, equal about 27% of the general fund revenues. Obviously, uh, we just talked about intergovernmental revenues. That's uh, 46%, so that's quite a chunk. Special assessments that you see, that would include more of like special charges, weeds, snow, weights and measures. Those are some of the items that that revenue includes. Now this is a, a chart showing the general, um, the general obligation, or excuse me, the general fund, the debt service fund, and the CIP fund expenses. So you can see our capital fund is about 30% of the total expenses. The next is just the general fund expenses. So you can see public works is about 20% of the total general fund expense budget, police 31%. General government 14, library eight. I know I had a question uh, Thursday about what other culture was and that's senior center, art gallery. City employees, the city of Platteville currently employs 89 people. This is counting only full-time and permanent part-time which is 20 hours plus staff. The total proposed 2015 wage and fringes for all employees is totals $5,723,710. This is 69% of the total general fund expense budget. Some of our major capital projects for 2015 include 4th Street, um, getting some public works equipment, just um, general street repairs and maintenance, remodeling City Hall. Uh, the PCA moving Platteville outdoors. However, I do want to say that the city is only paying for 150,000 of this. Um, the other the other funds were either raised by a DNR grant or funds that um, the PCA raised. The stormwater and then just other CIP projects. Um, some of those include new entrance signs to the city, aerial photos, financial software. So mill rate 101, uh, the proposed mill rate in Platteville is 7.61 for the 2014 taxes payable in 2015. The mill rate called the tax rate in some states also affects your taxes. It's part of the formula used in Wisconsin to assess your real estate taxes. So each mill represents $1 of tax assessments per $1,000 of assessed property value. Um, so uh, we, we talked about Platteville's mill rate. So a home with an assessed value of $100,000 would pay $761.13 a year in property taxes for the city's portion. So 
So we talked about the multiple taxing jurisdictions before. This just shows the 2013 let proposed 2000 or the 2013 le tax levy and the proposed 2014 tax levy. Um, it shows the percentage and increases. Um, as you can see, Southwest Technical College went down quite a bit, 36% decrease. Um, earlier this year, Act 145 was passed in which the state will pick up a large portion of what local property taxpayers usually pay for technical colleges throughout the state. Um, it doesn't mean there's a new pool of money, however, it just means that the state taxpayer dollars will be more heavily re relied on. They're just gonna, I guess, change the accounting a little bit. <laughs> it's doing it again. Hmm. We had a little problem. This was just finished today, isn't it nice? It's so nice. Okay, can you go back? Maybe you should thank Jody for getting the grant to do all this. Yes, I guess while Jody is doing that, it would be now's a good time to thank her for her hard work in getting this um, projector and screen. Um, done. They, did you, you've uh, applied for the grant, Jody? Yes. And we received a grant, so thank you. It's really nice. We were just admiring the police station because they had this nice projector and screen, and now we have it. So thank you for that, Jody. Yep. So where were you? Right here? Yes. Here. Next. Yep. Okay. So this is the proposed city levy um, of $3,926,194 with an assessed, assessed tax rate of $7.61 per 1,000 assessed valuation. That was $7.39 in 2014. And the equalized rate is $7.21 per $1,000 of equalized valuation. And that was 7.59 in 2014, so we saw a decrease in that. So what does this mean to you? So for the Platteville mill rate, um, using a $100,000 assessed home, homeowners will approximately owe $22.08 more for the city's portion of the levy. But when we take into the consideration the whole mill rate for all taxing jurisdictions, as you saw, Southwest Technical College's um, levy went down, homeowners receiving both the lottery credit and the first dollar credit will owe approximately $3.36 more on their total tax bill. Homeowners not getting the lottery credit will see a savings of 45 cents on their total tax bill. So the lottery credit went down, that's why there's a difference there of $5.71. So this is the proposed property tax for 2015. It just shows where we put our money. So 57% of the property tax goes to our general fund. 21% is going to the debt service fund. 21% to capital fund. So this is uh, the city portion of tax rates for the years 2005 to 2014, both assessed and equalized. It just shows 10 years, so you can see the difference. I've also included it in the packet in big print so you can see it a little better. Um, but as you can see, over 10 years, the percent changed was um, a minus 10.37%. And this, I really like this slide. This shows property taxes, taxes levied for the same number of years. So from 2005 to 2014. So you can see at the bottom the percent change um, from 2006 to 2015. So the school district, their property taxes, their, excuse me, their taxes levied have went up 80%. The city of Platteville's have went up 15.32%. And you can see the rest, so. As far as tax bills, the plan is for residents to receive their tax bills by December 15th. And that is it. Very nice Thanks. presentation. Mechanics. Uh, do you have a technique to point out things on the screen? That's fantastic. That's is there a go. pointer? I don't believe so. Oh. Yeah, the one in the place, they have like a really nice laser, so. Well, this one will have one too? Yes, I plan on returning this one. It's not functioning properly, so. Oh. Kind of okay. 
All right. Next item on the public hearing is public statements in favor. Any public statements against the proposed budget? And again, I should announce that if you wish to make a comment, there is a green sheet of paper on the table back there, and we would ask you to fill that out so that we do have your request to speak. <coughs> public statements in general? Any council discussion? Uh, I have one on the budget for Howard. Um, when we're talking about the taxi bus special revenue uh, and the property taxes and everything else, do we have an agreement on that yet? I haven't seen anything in writing on that. It, it's still being worked on. Okay, thank you. So uh, following up on Mike's question, this amount that's being included in resolution 1430 for the uh, shared taxi uh, supported by property taxes of $40,783, is this more or less than was included in last year's budget? It's less. Howard, how much less? Um, I would have to look at the uh, numbers. It's roughly uh, $1,500 less. Thank you. Any other council discussion or questions? Is there a motion to close the public hearing? I make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. I have a motion and a second. Jan will vote. Stockhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Seaboth Wilson? Yes. Den? Yes. Doss? Yes. Motion carries. <coughs> Common Council action on the resolution. I make a motion to adopt resolution 1430 appropriating the necessary funds for the operation and administration of the city of Platteville for the year of 2015 I'll as presented. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second, and we'll vote. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Seaboth Wilson? Yes. Den? Yes. Doss? Yes. Motion carries. I would just like to note um, that personally, and, and I'm sure on behalf of the council, thank you to the staff and city manager for all the hard work that you put into the budget effort as you do every year, and also thank to the council members from myself for having extra meetings to discuss the budget. And, and I'd like to offer special thanks to Valerie for doing the presentation tonight. I know she did this in the uh, public meeting last Thursday, and uh, it's just good information, and I think it's good to have it available. And so thank you for doing it tonight. There's actually a whole lot more people here tonight than there was <laughs> last Thursday. This is an excellent idea, though, because it makes everybody should have an explanation of this, and so nobody should run around town now and say, we don't know what's going on. Thank Very you. well done. All right, next public hearing is on the airport annexation, and um, you may have noticed that we are not taking action on that this evening, but we are having the public hearing. The plan commission tabled the question, and we will wait for them to act at their next meeting, and then we will put it on our council meeting for action the next time as well. So we we'll start with staff presentation. Okay, yeah, this is a, a request considering uh, annexation of the airport. Uh, it is the city of Platteville Municipal Airport, which is uh, about 544 acres located south and a little bit east of the city. It would consist of all the airport facilities, uh, the airport and runways and associated buildings. There is some additional cropland and wooded areas that would go with that. Um, the property basically is the airport property and the cropland, so there are no residents that would be included in this property. Um, the property itself is not contiguous to the existing city limits. Um, that is not a requirement of the, the state statutes due to the process that we're following, which is the annexation of territory owned by the city. Um, so that is not uh, an issue in this case. Um, as part of this uh, request, we also would like a, a decision made on the zoning for the property. Currently, it's zoned M1 light industrial under the Grant County zoning. If it's annexed, it would fall under the city's jurisdiction. Um, so we're recommending I-1 institutional district for that zoning. Um, this did go to the Planning Commission for their consideration at their November meeting, but they did table it, as was mentioned, because they wanted more um, information on what, what would be the benefits of the annexation to the, the city. So I did provide some additional information on that for your consideration um, basically there are 
what I would consider two primary benefits uh, to the city from this annexation. The first one, uh, once it becomes part of the city, then the, the laws, uh, rules, uh, regulations, et cetera, of the city would apply to this property. Since it's located in the township now, the uh, most of the rules would not apply. It would be county zoning uh, and other type of rules. So the sheriff's department would have jurisdiction if it's annexed, the city police department would have jurisdiction. Um, the other primary benefit would be uh, the revenue, additional revenue that could come into the city from this. Um, since it's municipally owned property, most of the property doesn't pay taxes, um, but there are some privately owned hangars on the uh, airport property that would pay uh, property taxes. Uh, right now, that uh, the portion of that uh, revenue goes to the Platteville Township. If it's annexed, that revenue would come to the city, and any additional privately owned hangars would be the same situation. Um, if there are additional private hangars constructed, uh, they would need a building permit uh, at the time of construction. Right now, those building permit fees would go to the township's uh, building inspector if it's annexed into the city. Um, those fees would be paid to the city. Um, th the reason that um, the uh, benefit, of, you know, the financial benefit is important to the city is the amount of money that the city does put into the airport or has put into the airport over the years. Um, the, generally, the day-to-day the -day operations of the airport uh, are functioning under the airport commission, and they get most of their revenue through the leases of the, the cropland and the hangars and some other sale of fuels and other miscellaneous expenses. Uh, generally, those expenses are adequate to cover the day-to-day -day operations, but any uh, capital improvements to the, the facilities uh, would involve uh, assistance from the city, and that has been the case in the past, and generally that would be a requirement in the future as well. Um, but I've listed um, some examples uh, over the years. It's, it's a considerable amount of money that's been spent over the years, so um, that's the idea is to get some of that revenue coming back to offset that. Joe, could you re review those numbers out loud, please? Um, well, for example, in the, the CIP, the Capital Improvement Program, uh, between 2003 and 2014, there was uh, a little over $313,000 spent. Uh, 2015 to 2019, upcoming, we're looking at about 279000 worth of projects at, at the airport. Um, other expenses over the years, um, $109,000 plus uh, for purchase of land in 1969, over 93000 purchase of land in 1995. Um, 1970, there was 12,000 plus dollars for uh, maintenance building cost, uh, another 17, almost 18,000 in 1975, uh, 53,000 in 1980. Um, in addition, the, the city loaned the airport commission $364,000 in 2007 for some of that hangar work, and there's uh, some of that money still has to be paid back. Um, otherwise, there's some staff. I guess I would call it staff expenses, time related to uh, processing the payment of bills that go through the airport commission, uh, auditing the, the records, and some miscellaneous expenses such as insurance. So it, it, on an annual basis, it's not always there, but over a period of time, there is a significant expense for the city. And how much does the township contribute to those expenses? None. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Can I ask a question? Sure. Go ahead. I have a question about uh, CIP uh, program, the capital improvements. Now, the $313,000 from 2003 to two, 2014, were those uh, absolute dollars paid by the city, not, not a shared project? Those are the amounts paid by the city. They show on our, our capital improvements fund uh, account. So those are paid by the city? Yes. And uh, 279000 projected to 2015 to 2019, that's going to be city money, not, not a share of some total amount. Or put another way, the state and the federal are not, they're not going to share any part of the cost of 279. The state and federal share is probably in the millions of dollars, which is 
So this is a city portion in order to obtain a state or federal grant. Yes. Okay. The city, is it true the city puts in 20% of these projects or something to that? 10, I think 10, part 10. of it, it's 5%, I think 5, the 10%, five and 10%, there's two different, <coughs> it depends upon the project. But it does require an investment of city tax dollars to do that. Okay. Currently it does, yes. Other people speaking? Mm -hmm. uh, we are there any public statements in favor? I know that Mr. Closter, who is the uh, airport commission chair right now, is here. If if uh, questions are asked, he's certainly willing to step forward and answer questions. Uh, we do have one person then who's asked to speak against Jason Colby. I live at 127 Pine Grove here in Platteville, Wisconsin. Um, first thing I'd like to point out, this is a check for $426 to the city of Platteville, and it was paid by me as a land lease to the city. I would just like to know why this was not included in the total revenue you have before you on the sheet of paper. As everyone else that owns a hangar out there also pays something similar to this. So do I not have to give you this check next year? Uh I, Dwayne, do you want to? I mean, that that's that, part of that's part of the, the airport budget. Yes. Airport commission budget. Yes. Okay, so I shouldn't write this the check to the city of Platteville next year. I should write it to the airport. Okay, thank you. Um, the other thing I have, we just went through a nice presentation how the mill rate in the city was around seven point six per thousand. The number here that you're going to get seven thousand four hundred ninety-one thousand dollars for the three existing hangars. If I do my quick and dirty math, now I was only a math major at the University of Wisconsin Madison, so forgive me. That means we have a million dollars worth of hangars out there between the three of them, three hundred thirty-three thousand a piece. I don't think that's right. My building permit for my hangar is for $140,000, and the other ones are the approximate same size. So that number that you're listing there at $7,600 is the total tax levy. It's not the tax levy that comes in just to the township or just to the city. That's inaccurate. You're, you're listing the total millage rate for all the people. As you just projected, if you live in the city, the millage is only going to be about 7.6, and the township's actually less than that. So you're listing the numbers that get in total, including the things that go to the VOTEC, the school board, and everybody else. So you're completely misrepresenting on the sheet of paper what the actual income to the city is going to be per year. Just like I thought would point that out, my quick and dirty math on this, and I may be wrong, is in the $2,400 per year ballpark once for those three hangers. Because otherwise, I'm, I'm in for a real treat. If, if, if you think my building is going to be evaluated at like $400,000, $300,000. Um, and, and it just begs the question then, if those things are wrong on here and these sources of revenue are not included, is there anything else that's not included on this list? Is there any other payments or any other thing that have, haven't been properly accounted for? Um, my other questions are, if the city is going to take this over wholesale, are they going to absolve the airport commission from having to update and buy new plowing equipment and new mowing equipment for the airport? Are they, is the city going to come out and plow the field? Is the city going to come out and mow the yard out there, which needs to be done, which we currently use the airport funds for, or is that going to be taken over by the city? Are, are other improvements going to be done by the city? And my last objection to all this is, as you guys already know, I'm not going to get city water. I'm not going to get city sewer. I'm not going to get any of the other city services. And one of the first things on this list is getting the municipal rules out there. How many times, and I asked this at the last meeting, how many times in the last two decades have the police actually been called out to the, to the airport? For other than to make a police report for something that they actually had to show up on a, in a timely fashion where somebody got shot, somebody was fell down and got hurt. Like, when? How often does that occur? Is that really an issue? Because I've been here for three years and I'm not aware of one thing that they had to do in that in that regard. So, I mean, I understand you you want the revenue, you need the revenue, you're looking for new revenue sources, and I can understand that. Um, the majority of the revenue for the airport actually comes from the state. Uh, because it's, it, you're right, it's mostly the, and the mostly the feds, because the, the grants we get from, for the projects we build are mostly from those two sources. Now, personally, I pay $20,000 a year 
in state taxes and about $80,000 a year in federal taxes. It's about 33% of my income. So I already fund this thing pretty well, I think. And I just want to know, like, why am I going to be asked to chip in additional money for this when I'm already footing a large portion of the bill? Just my thoughts. Thank you. Those are the only people that have asked to speak against. Are there any public statements in general? Again, I don't have anyone who's uh, provided any request to speak. Council discussion. Well, my question is about the um, amount of money coming to the city. It's 7491 Is that amount coming to the city? That's the amount for the school, all, all taxing jurisdictions. That's the total tax bills. Total tax bill. So right. the city is only getting a quarter of that, maybe? Right now, the, the city is not getting anything. That's the total tax bill. The, the but township in the, is getting in the future, the right. city will get a quarter of it? Uh, they'll get a portion of it, right. So my, my question is, uh, how much will the tax bill increase and how much will the city get from the four hangers, well, their portion? Can you, can you tell us that next can, time? If, 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 if the assessor assesses the same rate, I mean, if we have the same mill rate, I mean, I'm using last year's mill rate, and if the assessor is assessed the same amount, uh, they will be going up about 21%, a little, a little over, just about 22%. 21, 22 percent <coughs> right. of what amount? 10,000? Well, 7,491 is the amount for the three, three properties. Uh, his property was not assessed last year because it was, uh, it was uh, so we'll, we'll get, built this year. We'll get 20 percent of that. That's $2,000? Well, you're talking about if the mill rate goes up, then it'd be like 9,135. So it'd be 25 percent of that, roughly. So somewhere between 2,000 and 2,700. Right, and that's just for the hangers that are there, and obviously with this new construction that took place, there'll be a lot more hangers that'll be uh, likely to be built out there, so. And just for the sake of clarification, the memo did say that that money is coming to the city, but I think it's a semantics issue that of what percent of that actually goes to the taxes, and I know that we covered this two weeks ago when we discussed it, we had the same conversation. Yeah. That of the seven thousand four hundred ninety-one dollars, not all of it is actually revenue for the city. It's right. money that the city collects as part of all the taxes that they collect. Yes. Other council discussion. Um, I will just in note, the in the staff note uh, prior to distribution, could you please indicate? Uh, take the assessed values of the hangers as they are and then apply the mill rates that uh, the city would have for next year and uh, take those assessments uh, and I don't know if you have if you can get the township tax rate by the time we have this again it'll probably be everybody people will already have their tax bills perhaps uh, I, I guess that while I understand um, I understand the questions and some of the objections. I also want to point out that at, that while this change is difficult at this time, one of the improvements we made to the airport was to build these taxi lanes so that we could have an expanded airport with more hangars. Um, part of that is to, to service potential businesses, potential recreation, potential uh, recreation flyers, more people taking flying lessons, the ability to have, uh, you know, a, a, the airport commission is the group that gets the revenue from the land lease of the land to the crop, crop farmer, uh, from the hangar rentals and those kind of things. And yes, the city does process those payments for the airport commission. So those things are going to continue for the operation of the airport, but the expansion of the airport really uh, means that there have to be additional, additional revenue sources to support these taxpayer dollars that are being allocated to the, to the uh, airport on a basis. And if we get more and more hangars, 
the, this is small now, but it has the potential uh, for them to need more service, to need more expansion, and for us to want to do that. So uh, I realize there's a lot of questions, but I think we have to look to the future. Well, and I think the comment about snow plowing and things like that, the, as you said, the, the crop rent and the land leases and things like that now, the airport commission. And they would, well, they, it's they my understanding they would continue to function just like they do. So that the change here is really in the jurisdiction, the jurisdictional responsibility and, and who issues the tax bill annexed to the city. The city issues the tax bill with tax rates established here jurisdictional responsibility currently falls to the township they issue the tax bill but to my knowledge every other thing would continue to operate as it does and I believe the comment was made at the last meeting that if for some reason the income that isn't the revenue that's now coming from things like the the uh, rental of the land if that decreases the city then has to increase the budget for the for the airport so it's working well and the city is the partner uh, the city is the owner of the property and also the city taxpayers allocate funding in the CIP so that improvements can be made to the airport and that is what we've been doing and, and it's been working very well when you consider the millions of dollars that actually we have received from federal and state grants but that would not happen if the city didn't share in that grant application so um, any other council discussion all right, we need a motion to close the public hearing. I move to close the public hearing. Second. I have a motion on the second, and we'll vote. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Seaboth Wilson? Yes. Den? Yes. Doss? Yes. Motion carries. Next item is consideration of the consent calendar. The following items may be approved on a single motion and vote due to the routine nature of previous discussion. Please indicate to the council president if you would prefer separate discussion and action. A is minutes of the October 29, 2014 and the November 3rd, 2014 special meetings and also the November 11th, 14th regular council meeting. B is payment of bills. C is appointments to boards and commissions. And while I have no appointments this evening, I would like to note that we do have openings on the following boards and commissions. The Historic Preservation Commission, the Board of Appeals, which is extraterritorial zoning, also the Board of Appeals regular zoning, and the Community Development Board. Also, the Museum Working Group has been meeting, and one of the um, things we're looking at is the trust agreement that was signed between Mr. Jameson and the city when the Jameson Museum Association, or excuse me, Jameson Museum collection was accepted by the city. And one of the things that that trust agreement says is that the city council needs to appoint a trustee. And um, Barb Stockhausen has in indicated she would be interested in, in being that trustee appointee. And um, I'm announcing it this evening so the council members can think about it. But I would otherwise appoint her next meeting so that the, the Board of Trustees can reconvene and discuss some of the things that have been brought forward about the museums. Um, the other thing is licenses in your packet. There are one year and two year operators licenses and also taxi driver license applications. Is there a motion? I move to approve. Second? I'll second, second that. We have a motion and a second and we'll vote. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Seaboth Wilson? Yes. Den? Yes. Doss? Yes. Motion carries. Next item is citizens comments, observations and petitions. I have no request to speak this evening. Next item then is reports in your packet committee <coughs> reports. There's the airport commission Dawes. Nothing to add. The library report. I have nothing to add. Level Community Safe Routes Committee, Seabell Wilson. Nothing to add. I have a question. Yes. Question for Howard. On the minutes of um, November 3rd, and it says here that uh, the committee recommended the following, the, co the committee did, a pedestrian crossing at Steely Avenue and Business 151. Is that uh, possible, legally, allowable, whatever the word I should use? It is possible, um, 
but that would be something that we would need to review. Uh, it would it would be something that we would want to make sure is not just striped on the road, but properly lit, and potentially have some sort of warning for for traffic. In addition to that, um, and those things were included in many of the uh, recommendations in our CIP regarding uh, pedestrian accommodations along Business 151 that uh, were not funded. And the next question is, what about uh, pedestrian crossing, say, down by Culver's? Was that discussed? That was not discussed at that, at that meeting. I would prefer that more that the people, when we get a proper crossing at uh, Water Street, that most of the people be directed to use that rather than crossing uh, farther up. I understand people being the way that they are. That's probably not very likely to happen, but we want to uh, encourage people to cross at a proper crosswalk when one is provided. Okay, thank you. Next is the City of Platteville Area Ambulance Committee meeting, which was held on October 30th, and the minutes are in the packet. I will just remind council members that there will be <laughs> another uh, meeting on December 10th at the Southwest Health and it is a closed session meeting for the area ambulance committee members in particular those who were unable to attend the last meeting and also the um, presentation from the Southwest Health will be given at that meeting and you are welcome to attend. Uh, the Ad Hoc Museum Working Group, we have included a number of uh, meeting minutes in the packet. I have nothing to add to those at this time. Under action items, the first one, development agreement for 25 East Main. Okay, um, this is the building that uh, has just recently had the scaffolding removed. I hope people notice that. Uh, they did the necessary repairs to basically stabilize that building so it can get through winter, and then uh, they'll come back when we have some nicer weather to finish that facade. Um, but the, the RDA and the council had both uh, previously agreed to uh, uh, low interest loans to assist with the uh, uh, renovation of that building, the, the exterior and the interior. Um, it, those were contingent upon uh, a development agreement and we had included a development agreement and one of the conditions in that agreement that was approved uh, last time by the council was that the renovations, the improvements have to increase the value of the property um, so that has a fair market value of a minimum fair market value of $507,980 by January 2016. Um, afterwards, the, the purchaser, uh, Wall Properties, uh, looked at that number and realized, well, that, that number was taken from information that was provided to the RDA when they were kind of describing the overall project. That was not, never intended to be the ultimate end value of the property. That was kind of the, all the construction and expenses uh, going into that property. So essentially that number is not realistic. It's not achievable for that size of a building in downtown Platteville. So essentially that, that, that uh, agreement, she would never be able to meet that uh, condition as agreement. So she's asking the council to reconsider that condition. Um, I mean, the condition would stay in there, it would just change the number. Um, basically, she, she's uh, subtracted from that number uh, the contingency uh, expenses, legal fees for obtaining tax credits, uh, the facade repairs, because she's looking at the, the, the facade repairs don't necessarily allow her to charge more rent for the apartments or the space, so it doesn't really increase the value of the building itself as far as tax purposes, and then some other personal property uh, items. So she's uh, recommending that that dollar amount be decreased by about $120,000. So if approved, the, the development agreement would instead have a, a minimum tax value of $387,980. Uh, 
um, the other conditions of the agreement would remain the same and I did highlight the other changes that were if you recall you approved the development agreement conditioned upon several changes so I wanted you to be able to see what those other changes were uh, clearly <laughs> so the only other additional change would be to that dollar that dollar amount are there any questions <clears throat> Questions from anyone? Where would it be determined what the penalty would be in, or non-performance? Is there a... Um, if you look in the, uh, the agreement, um, it's on page five, non-performance penalty. Um, basically, what it says is she either pays the, the taxes on that three property as if it was $307,000, you pay that in taxes, or you you make up the difference from what you would actually be paying and that amount through a, an additional payment penalty. So she either is paying that whole amount in taxes or it's a combination of taxes and an additional penalty to come up with the same amount uh, paid to the city. That's, that, that's kind of a standard um, uh, part of a, a agreement that we've used on several other projects in the downtown area. Other questions? Is there a motion? I move to approve. Is there a second? Second. second. We have a motion and a second. We'll vote. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Seaboth Wilson? Yes. Den? Yes. Doss? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, I would like to make one additional comment, um, and that is that uh, it has been said that this sets a new precedent, that this has never been done before, that the city has never participated in a loan to a building in the downtown. I would have to say that that is not true. Uh, Joe, we've done that happened well before I was on the council, before I was involved, but I think it was in 2006 or so that a similar situation occurred with another building in the downtown? Uh, through, through the RDA in the city, we, we've done uh, several projects to assist with improvements to buildings. Uh, the Bailey building would be the largest one. Uh, the building where Applied Micro is located. Um, there was assistance to uh, the Avalon Theater for some equipment upgrades. Uh, the Driftless Market has had some assistance. Um, I'm drawing a blank. There was uh, at least one other one that was included as well. So th this would not be the first situation. So this is not a new precedent. In fact, I, w I would point out that in some instances, this is the only way that some of these buildings have been in Im improved. I can remember the Bailey building having two floors where birds flew in and out the windows mm -hmm. during the year. And, and you looked in the stairwell, and the excrement in the stairwell was so deep that it was disgusting to walk by the building. So, and nobody would venture forth on that project because of the risks involved in downtown redevelopment projects. They just are not easy projects to do. So uh, I, I just want people to know that this was not precedent setting, that in fact this precedent had been set a long time ago. And that that, that report that this was precedent setting is certainly not true. All right, next item, Kallenbach Development Agreement for Property at 1536 County Highway B. Okay, this is the last one. <laughs> we, we, we've approved the, uh, the other 11. Uh, if you recall, this uh, purchaser initially had some concerns because this property is uh, subject to a, a legal appeal regarding the, the sale of the property. Um, he, he's looked at it and realized that the, the risks are, are low enough that he can move forward with it. He, basically, he's just going to not undertake any construction activity until that appeal um, is underway. And our, our agreement allows for that. It gives him a little bit more time to make those improvements so that um, he doesn't uh, obtain or go through any more risk than is necessary. 
Um, other than that, the, the agreement is the, essentially the same as what we've approved for the other uh, 11 properties. Um, so staff does recommend approval. Questions, anyone? <clears throat> a motion then? I make the motion we approve the development agreement for the property at 1536 County Highway B. Um, uh, and that development agreement is with Dwayne Wagner. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. We'll vote. Dockhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Seaboth Wilson? Yes. Den? Yes. Doss? Yes. Motion carries. Joe? MC, Resolution uh, 1431. Madam Council? Yes. I, I have a question. Joe, have uh, improvements started on others of these properties? Yes. Um, the Building grid, permits have been? The, the Gridley uh, properties had significant work done already. Uh, the Third Street property, he's got a permit uh, and has done some work. And uh, 260 South Chestnut Street has um, started some work. I thought I saw digging around the Gridley property. And so. I believe the Irene Street property is demolished now. Or they've got the permit to demolish it for uh, pre preparation for a new building. All right. Uh, resolution 1431 to authorize salaries for City of Platteville employees. And tonight I, let, I put on your desk there uh, some amendments to the, the salary ordinance that we had. Um, but they, basically these uh, salaries and wages are, are compatible with what we have with the uh, budget that was just passed uh, earlier in the meeting. I uh, just asked the council to approve these to, uh, to confirm what's in our budget. Dwayne, can you explain what it means to say salary rate of pay instead of budgeted amount <laughs> under your uh, on your uh, amended salaries and weights of pay? Resolution. Memo. What does that mean? Salary rate of pay instead of budgeted amount. Under number two. Oh, okay. The uh, the budget amount for the the museum director is like twenty four thousand or something because he's only here for part of the year. But the actual rate of pay that he's getting paid is the other amount that I was talking about here. It should have been the fifty some thousand. Okay, so that's, that's what the I rate meant. of. It's okay. the rate of pay, not the amount okay. that was budgeted. Yes. <coughs> And then I, I see that uh, Luke is now our recreation coordinator and forester. Yes, congratulations. Oh. To I Mr. don't know Peters. if that's congratulations to Luke <laughs> or what. Um, <clears throat> that used to be the forester's position. Excuse me, Dwayne. Used to be uh, part of the engin the engin city engineer's job. Um, so this will be a little bit different. I know I talked to some past city engineers, and they said they were the foresters in the past. Mr. Peters comes to the city with a uh, education background, including some forestry knowledge. Um, and so I thought he was a very good fit for the position. Uh, we've already discussed the position. Uh, he's already made significant progress in the position. Uh, we are still very active at trying to recover from the tornado. Uh, and so there's a significant number of new trees that are being planted throughout the community. And uh, he also helped with a grant to help get more trees. Uh, so we look forward to a very bright 2015 having Luke at the helms. Thank you. I make a motion uh, that we adopt resolution 1431 authorizing the salaries and rates of pay of the officers and permanent employees excluding union personnel, library personnel, and city manager for the year 2015. Second. We have a motion and a second. And we'll vote. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Seaboth Wilson? Yes. Den? Yes. Doss? Yes. Motion carries. Under information and discussion, A is ordinance amending section 201, Aldermanic District Number 3 in Election Ward 5 due to annexation of property. So quite, a, quite a mouthful. <laughs> it certainly is. But when we annex the property in, in August? In 1536 County Highway B. County Highway B. Um, that was in a different county supervisory district than what our city county supervisory district is so the county in turn um, revised their boundaries 
so it will fit in ours now. So now we have to finish the final step of revising our, our ordinance to revising our boundaries. All for one house. It'll be all set <laughs> for okay. one property. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have uh, a question. I if, an, if the airport is annexed, will that fall? I mean, there are, there are no people living there, but would that fall into the voting? I'll have to look into that, yeah. <laughs> It'll have to be added to some district. Yeah. It'll probably be its own district, I would guess, and because technically, when you when you annex in a property, if it's not part of whatever one that's closed, it's its own district. So we'd probably have a voting ward number nine without any Voters. without any occupants. Well, we need to add another council person then. <laughs> Yeah. No. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Voting ward with no people. Maybe I can run that. That'll be very That'll be interesting. Yeah, that would be a state <laughs> regulation. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, the next item is the five year fire agreements with Belmont Township, Ellenboro Township, Lima Township, Smelser Township, Elk Grove Township, Harrison Township, and Platteville Township. I'm reading this every one so that our fire chief can come to the to the microphone and explain to us what it is. Well, good evening. I'm Ryan Simmons, Fire Chief. And the fire agreements that we have, um, they've kind of been established for, for quite a while, and these are just some updates to them. Um, the main changes, I think I kind of outlined them there for you. Um, and, and the purpose of this right now is just to get feedback from the, the council, um, as well as some feedback from some of the townships themselves as far as if they need clarifications or you know, explanations of some of the sections in the, the agreements. Um, there's some things in the past that maybe were neglected out of it um, that have been added into it to um, kind of protect and clarify the interests of, I think, everybody <laughs> involved. Um, and then just minor updates to, like, increase of the charge for a fire service calls. Um, so the items I put on there, the first thing was there was a separate addendum back in 2011 for the um, fire inspection fees and services. Um, that's actually will be just included right in the agreement uh, moving forward rather than a separate addendum to the past agreement that was, that was there. Um, there'll be a new uh, paragraph added that is similar to the equipment and services and budget items that are there now that covers property maintenances, um, that aren't currently there. There's nothing there on the fire station. It's kind of been that uh, verbal agreement that if you know the the city did a renovation or uh, addition to the to the fire station or a built a new fire station, that the townships have in the past just kind of had that verbal agreement um, that they would pay their portion of it, which typically comes out, I think Dwayne can probably help me if I'm off, but it's, it's usually right in the like 23 to 24% of the, the cost is shared between the townships. Um, and then the remainder amount is, is paid for by the city. Um, that's just added into that agreement that wasn't there um, in the past. Um, the next thing is just an increase of the, of the cost per call from $500 to $750. Uh, per call, you know, that goes off, that's, that's billed to the townships, which in turn bill that to the, the property owner. Uh, typically, most all the insurance companies cover that. Um, most of them handle it as part of the overall claim. So if it's 500 or 750, it just goes towards the overall claim of the, the fire loss to their property and then minus whatever their deductible. So um, it just brings in a little bit more money that Actually, that, that additional amount actually benefits the township more than it does the city um, because it goes into a, a fund that is used to help offset some of the um, cost for, um, like, say, um, they purchase a new truck, whatever's in that, or if we have to buy some equipment that maybe is used more for towards some of the township stuff. Um, out of that amount, the city gets $250 of it. Um, and then the remaining amount goes into the, the separate fund that the city kind of maintains right now, and it's used for purchases of, of larger items for the, the fire department. So if, essentially, it's going to just add a little bit more money into that fund um, 
to help out with the township expenses. So the city will still maintain their percentage that they're, they're getting now, so that will not change. Um, the next item is um, changing the kind of the way the, the, we collect the portion back from the townships for the budget amounts. Uh, currently, it's just based off of what the approved estimated budget you know for the year is. So whatever dollar amount we say we're hopefully going to stay within the budget and that is what their percentages are paid out on. Uh, what we're proposing in this is going to the actual budget amount, kind of like EMS does. So at the end of the year, when the city knows exactly what the budget was, if we're under budget, they're paying more than they should be. If we're over budget, they're not paying enough. Um, so the, the way it is averaged out over the last couple, three years, it's pretty much going to wash. You know, 2012... Um, versus 2013, I think 2012, they were they actually paid a little bit more than what they would have paid if it would have been off of actual dollar amounts. And then in 2013, they kind of paid a little bit less. So, I mean, it all washes out. I mean, it would be relatively similar to where they're at now, but it's based off the actual numbers versus the estimated numbers of what the, the budget's actually going to be. Um, and there is a couple things that were kind of omitted in the past that are also added into that. So um, in the past, um, things like um, fuel and oil, like fuel, they didn't pay for it. Um, for some reason, it was scratched out of their obligation to pay, which I'm not sure why. Um, but that's added back in. So they'll have to pay for the fuel that goes into their trucks and things like that. So, um, But it, that's a minor amount when you look at their percentage of the overall. So. Um, and then the last thing would be increasing it to uh, a five-year term. Um, right now, I th believe it's at the last one. It was a four-year term. So it kind of went from three-year to like four-year, and now we just put it at a five-year term. It's, it seems to be a little simpler to deal with them on a five-year term than having to deal with them every two to three years. So, um, so that's kind of a summary of where everything's at. Um, um, I know I had had a couple... Um, conversations with a couple township uh, chairs that could not be here tonight and they the only concern they had was the the verbiage on that percentage that I talked about you know the 23 24 percent that's that's really not in there anywhere um, so that'd be one thing that I would look at changing um, where it talks about the building and that instead of it doing by they're obligated based off the number of sections in it is putting it into a more I guess uh, common terms that they could understand that it's the their percentage is based off of probably what the population of those sections divided by the overall population to come out to what their percentage is so I think I could just work with probably Duane and, and Valerie to change that wording instead of it being in an eight section numbers or something to be the how that pop how that percentage is is calculated so that there's a understanding that you know, they are only paying a certain percentage and they aren't paying, you know, 100% of it or something. So I said that was a, definitely something I think we could throw into the actual final copy is to clarify that a little bit better. So, um, so that's kind of a summary of it, I guess. If there's any questions that any of the council has, I would be willing to answer them the best that I can. Ken. I have a question. Um, uh, bullet point four. Now, you refer, you're referring to, say, for example, on uh, uh, which, which is Allenboro, 7B, and so you added the word actual there in front of the city of Potfield? Uh, correct. Um, and then, uh, <clears throat> okay, so that's an addition. Well, then my question is, um, maybe I'm reading too much into this, but it says uh, the yearly budget deficit yeah. The, and then the, you look at you look at the front. And you talk about the yearly budget. Yeah. The, so the you yearly take a percentage of the yeah. deficit or the budget. It, it's the the what they're charged is the deficit amount of their portion. So obviously all the incomes that come in. So from the um, fire inspections and everything, all the revenues that come in from the fire department is subtracted off of the budget amount. So whatever is remaining that the income doesn't cover is a portion that they pay that their their portion of okay so 
It's not a portion of the yearly budget. It's a portion it's, of what's remaining. It's a portion of what's remaining after all the incomes okay. come in. Okay. Your, your, your statement in the front there is a little different. And we can look at that. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I have a question. And that deals with, I understand that you had the fee schedule as an addendum to the agreement. Now this sets a fee schedule for five years. If it's a five year agreement, do you think that that's a good practice, a good idea? That would say then no matter what happens in terms of, I don't know, increased costs for doing this service, the sum is going to be $750 for each call for the next five years mm -hmm. because that's what the agreement says. So, <coughs> I, you know, I have no, no clue what could influence that number to be insufficient or anything, but also in terms of inspections and reinspections and all of those kinds of things, mm -hmm. I, you know, this would fix that amount while the cost of hiring an inspector may change for some reason. Who sure. knows why? I mean, maybe the state now says they have to be certified or they have to be. They currently are certified and do have to are be they certified. Up the certification or they say they have to be full time. Who knows? Right. Who knows? I, I'm, I'm always a little concerned about fixing amounts for five years. Sure. And I wouldn't be so much concerned about the per cost, uh, per call cost. Um, you know, that's been that way a long, long time. Um, there is um, statements in there that cover things like hazardous materials, large things that would be of higher expense that that property owner or whatever is responsible for those added special circumstances that they have to pay for those, those additional costs. Um, you know, the, the inspection part, I guess we're just trying to simplify things. It, you know, it's something that would not have to be. It could be a, an amendment or a separate, you know, part to it. I, I, you I'm know, just I, asking I guess you to think about the fact that setting that today and and doing that for five years without a clause that says it has to be reevaluated <laughs> or it might be reevaluated if significant change. I and I don't know enough about what you're if, doing, but I'm just... If, if five years is too long for the city council, then you guys should give us direction so that we can reduce that and have that prepared for your next meeting. Oh, I don't mind the agreement being five years. That, that's not my, my, my thing. It's just that the fees were as an addendum before. In the agreement, it probably said there would be fees, but then there was an addendum that established the fee. And I think we do that with other fees. I think we've changed that in some of our ordinances where we say that the fees as set per by year resolution. by the council or yep. something like that. So maybe something like and that could be added. I don't have a problem added. with the townships yeah. and having a five-year agreement. I right. probably wouldn't have a problem with a 10-year agreement. I wouldn't, you know, I, I, my, my concern is that here it is 2015 sure. and who knows what's happening in 2020. Mm -hmm. we, we could certainly propose uh, wording similar to what Ms. Nichols suggested, uh, fees to be set from time to time by the city council. Um, uh, or the fire inspections. I, 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 I just want yeah. Ryan to think about that. Sure. And I don't know if you had. And, and I guess that, that those fees affect more so those property owners um, than it does probably the townships themselves. So I think changing that verbiage shouldn't affect the township so much as, you know, I don't think they would probably care too much either way because just like it does in the city, the property owner is paying for that, that fee for those inspection services. So, you know, the city isn't paying them, same thing there. So I think uh, just changing some verbiage would be a pretty minor to, to cover that basis, so. These uh, changes, did you meet with a group of uh, people from the townships to work this out, or is this from you? This is from me looking at uh, what was there and what I felt was best to hopefully cover both sides of the party. All, all of the townships did receive this agreement, though, and were notified of the meeting this evening in case they had any comments or wanted to talk about it. So this is kind of the opportunity for all of us to talk about a proposal. 
So you're saying that you had a chance to start looking at your information. It was time to start reviewing things. And uh, the time was before I got office, before okay. I I got this. It, this has been needed to be done for probably a year or yeah. two. Yeah. So the fire yes. chief is helping us solve some problems uh, <laughs> as the agreements had previously passed. So. Okay. Any other questions? No, but if there are township people in the audience who have who aren't really familiar with our process um <coughs> you would like to speak to this town this, the um subject that we're talking about right now then i would ask that you fill out the green sheet back there and we'd be more than happy to have you come up and and speak at the podium all right i'm sure if you have other questions the fire chief is always available and we're available as well so okay thank you you're welcome thank you that concludes our information and discussion and the next two items are both closed sessions so we need uh, motions to go into closed session can we make uh, can I make two motions at once or do we make one motion or what do we do I think you could do them together just read both in that way one is going to follow the other so okay I make a motion we go into closed session per state statute 198y 85 parent 1 parent e deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public properties or investing of public funds or conducting other specified specified public building whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session this is possible land purchase and per Wisconsin statute 1985 parent 1 parent C considering employment compensation or performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction and exercises responsibility city manager employment contract with the possibility that we will return to open session to take action after closed session second we have motion in a second and we'll vote stackhausen yes bonin yes killian yes nichols yes see both wilson yes den yes das yes motion carries mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.